how to get your stories into the media. And of course, it'd be slightly ironical if uh, if I was saying don't send dull stories into the media and I do a dull presentation. So here we go. The pressure is on and I've got 10 minutes and I'm going to divide this into two areas. One is building the relationship and two is building the story. When it comes to building the relationship, I'm going to start straight away with a top tip for those of you wanting to get your stories into the media. And that is thank the media for the last time they put the story in for you. Because I've been doing this 15 years and I can count on the claws of two paws how many times people have actually thanked me for running a story. And that story might have cost me hundreds of pounds in writer's fees, in graphic design, let alone the printing and distribution costs. So it's an easy win. The other thing, of course, is targeting. I get thousands of emails a year. Let's suppose that you had an advertising contract that you were giving to somebody to spend for you, let's say £100,000, and they came back and their media plans were completely untargeted. You'd wipe the floor with them, wouldn't you? So what is it about the PR industry that just sends endless blanket emails that are completely untargeted? And that damages my inbox. I get stories about Scottish salmon fishing or about a trendy new bar opening in Shoreditch. So what does that mean? That means that I go through my emails, like all of us, very quickly. I delete stuff, and that could have been something that should have been interesting, but because it comes and it made a long list of stuff that is not. Hi there. Again, opening an email saying, hi there, just gives the impression that the sender is just blanket coveraging loads of people, and they don't really care what they're sending out. So what do we need? We need a name. So the way to start this is to do something very old fashioned indeed, and that is to phone somebody up. The way to start is to look at the various media that you feel is applicable to your business for your target market and select specific ones and then build relationships with them. So do that old fashioned thing. Phone somebody up having looked through the publication or online or the blogger and see which sections they write, which is going to be most pertinent to your business and find the name of the person that's responsible for that area. Phone them up, say, I've got this story. Um, I hope it's really of interest. Would you mind if I send an email? They're going to say yes. Do send it over. And then, of course, you've got a chance of it not being deleted. And then maybe later that day or the following day, phone them up and go, did you get it? Were there any questions? Can I... Can I do anything for you? Was anything unclear? Um, possibly we're going to have an open day. We're going to have a launch. Have something that interests me. Have some wine and canapes. Obviously, you might be looking at media further afield. And that is going to be really a case of discussing collaboration with some other people so that your story has more weight. It has more people involved. And of course, if you're thinking about journalists coming and staying over, you're going to need to share the load on that because obviously it could be a one or a two night stay with uh, lunches or dinners or sustenance or whatever thrown in. So it has to be a really collaborative thought process here. I say this because we all love parts of the marketing process. Is it new product development or is it brand development? But when it comes to press and publicity, it is a sales job. You have to get that relationship, do the targeting, do the sales and think about conversion instead of thinking, oh, well, I've just I've got a great database. I've sent it out to, to 100 people. Job done. Tick. Walk away from your desk. But you really want conversion, don't you? One good visit, one good story could bring thousands. And of course, from the media's point of view, we need value that comes through to us. We make mistakes. I could be two hours from deadline and suddenly I realise I've got half a page of space left to run. I'm urgently looking through my material. Who sent me things? What can I fill it with? I'm in a panic. So something that's well written, cogent, pertinent, I'm more likely to put it on the page. And also pictures. Too many people think of pictures again as, as the end of a process. Who cares? Just chuck it in. But of course, I don't need my magazine to look rubbish because I've been sent through some stuff that is just dog-eared, out of focus, um, a toilet seat that's up, some curtains that could have been cleaned 10 years ago, for instance. 
these are really important things. Get that slickness and get that professionalism, having built the relationship so that the media can trust you. Because there's things that we need out of this. We want stories that are good, possibly exclusive. We, we're we under competition to beat our, our fellow titles. So the first dibs on a story is really important. We love embargoes. If there's an embargo on it, we're all there champing at the bit at one o'clock when the embargo lifts to be the first one to press the button and get it onto digital. The other thing, if you send a press release, I get people then that, that email 10 minutes later go, oh, you made a mistake. But by which time I might have put it on Twitter and Facebook. So it just costs me work. So it's so important to get it completely right before you send it. And then we can work with it. It really doesn't cost a lot for you to have a range of material in terms of photos that you can send. When I do the PR for the 10 Parishes Festival, what I do is I select the media that I think really need to run the story and I phone them up and I agree the space with them. They're very good to me. I don't know why, but they do. And I will write specific articles per publication, not just send a syndicated piece out with the same pictures. So that means that all the performing artists in that festival, I've got a better chance of getting a lot more of them mentioned because I send a whole load of pictures and I send different pictures to the different media so everybody's got that little bit of exclusivity. Also I get lots of emails saying hi there please see attached press release. Well I'm not going to see it because I'm not going to open it because I don't trust the sender, I might not know you, I don't need to risk a virus. There's nothing to stop people putting in the main body of the email the contents of the press release and then say please see attached attach, uh, attachment. But of course, if you phoned ahead, all this process gets a lot more straightforward. It's all about trust. So having built the relationships, we're now on to part two is building the story. As I said before, it is a sales job and it doesn't suit everybody to write about themselves. Sometimes you need somebody to come in from the outside, see the wood for the trees. But what do we need to build that story? Often in sales letters, there's various structures that can be used. Problem, solution, offer, PSO. Here's a potential problem. Here's my suggested solution. Here's the offer. Now, I don't particularly suggest that's relevant for all businesses and what you do, but it's that thinking about the, the way that the, the, the press release comes across. It has to follow a route and it has to be really original and highlight your USPs. What is going to really make it stand out for the editor? Because sending in advertorial, we do this, we're open for business. That's that's not interesting, is it? You, you wouldn't want to read that. So what is it? Taking it into that third person, that review format, what's happened that makes it really unusual? We talked about uh, in previous webinars, the proximity of the Coleridge Path. In Xanadu de Kubla Khan, a stately pleasure dome decree. You've got all this creativity on your doorstep. Make it into a story. You could have had anniversaries in how long you've been in business, or it could be personal things. Stories are really involving people make great reading, a journey. If you've had some sort of misfortune that then you've rebuilt the business, it could be in your personal life as well. Anniversaries. You may have relocated here for particular reasons. What really brings out a real flavour of your business that is unique and that's going to make us over here, journalists, look at it and think that's really got a good narrative in it. I always think, right from the heart, edit from the head. Spew out what makes you tick, what makes you started this business. And then maybe get somebody else to sense check it because I get lots of press releases that I don't understand what the hell they're saying. And I should do because it's of an interest, an area of interest to me or something I've got experience in. And I still can't understand the press release. So do get it tested by somebody who's objective, who can see the wood for the trees that, that might say, I don't really know what you're saying here. So it's that originality. Don't be afraid to really think through what is unique because that's what we need. And like I said, the collaboration between various businesses, think about the, the path itself. That is a story, isn't it?
by definition. It's a journey and it's a journey in reading things that helps get you publicity. Things like top five, top ten, history, really delve in and think there's, there's so much material that you can just relate to and sometimes it can seem a little bit tangential but just do some really good brainstorming and possibly speak to people like me and think this is my business, I'll chuck some completely bonkers ideas back at you, you'll think nine out of ten of them are rubbish but there might be one that you can hang some material on and think okay this could be a story. Going back to Coleridge, Let's build the biggest model albatross in the world. Or ancient mariner. Let's have an ancient mariner convention. I bet nobody's done that before. You'd think that's totally off the park, isn't it? But that is the sort of story that is going to get some traction. Look at the way that trends happen. The growth of veganism, the growth of green agendas really see what you can be on the front end of the curve on before anybody else does it that gives you a bit of a story. I'm going to say of course things like entering awards which will please now. Awards are great, people love to read about success but a trophy on a mantelpiece is not particularly an exciting story, it's what you are going to do with it that makes the difference. How is that going to change your life your business? Is that going to bring in a new ethos for you? Is it going to think about new customer segments, collaborations with people? So it's thinking all the way in this generating news interest is something that at first glance is quite rudimentary, but how are you going to breathe life into it? So my summary is build the relationship first, get the trust, understand the media, understand what they need to achieve from it. And secondly, build the story. Small blocks to start with, but really think through what is unique about your business and why you do it. What, what really turned you on when you started? And think about how people can understand it and see the wood for the trees. And that is it. Do ask any questions.